ഗുഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ ഡിയർ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് കഴിഞ്ഞ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ ഇൻ ദി പ്രീവിയസ് ക്ലാസ് വിത്ത് ഡിസ്കസിങ് അബൌട്ട് ദി എ സി പി ആർ തിയറി ബാലൻസ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ പെയർ റിപ്പൾഷൻ തിയറി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ തിയറി വിൽ എനേബിൾ യു ടു പ്രഡിക്ട് ദി ഷേപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഓർ ദി ജോമെട്രി ഓഫ് സിമ്പിൾ മോളിക്യൂൾസ് ബിഫോർ ദാറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് അബൌട്ട് Lewis dot structure and this Lewis dot structure will make you to understand how the valence electrons are distributed how the valence electrons of an atom is distributed within a molecule and VACPR theory will help you to predict what is the geometry and what is the shape of the molecule now be knowing about the quantum mechanical picture of a molecule an atom the electrons are not just distributed as points or the point charges it is distributed around the atom through we have pictureized this the distribution of electron around the atom through the orbital concept but through the probability of finding electrons around an atom so that is the quantum mechanical model so we have a challenge that how do we update the lewis dot structure into the quantum mechanical model into the orbital concept and the another challenge the second challenge is how do we take both the property that is the electronic distribution around the molecule and the geometry of the molecule under a same umbrella so the quantum mechanical model is able to take both the concept i mean the lewis dot structure which predict the electronic structure of the molecule and the vscpr theory which could predict the geometry or the shape of the molecule will be merged and taken under the same umbrella and updated by quantum mechanical model that is what we learn vbp valence bond theory valence bond theory is uh, put forward by linus pauling one of the most effective and famous excellent scientist who has taken the quantum mechanical concept to simplify the chemical bonding within a molecule so according to vbt it's not the electrons which is shared in between the atom in order to form a molecule it is the atomic orbitals they got overlap in order to form a chemical bond so a chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals so there are few postulates so the valence bond theory says that singly occupied atomic orbital overlap with the singly occupied atomic orbital of another atom if the singly occupied electrons are having opposite spin so the postulate number 1 is valence bond theory states that an atomic orbital is formed by share sorry the chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals we know that atomic or atomic orbital is a three dimensional region within an atom where the probability of finding electron is very high so a chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals overlapping of atomic orbitals chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals for atomic orbitals there are two conditions atomic orbital must be singly occupied singly occupied by electrons they should have an unpaired electron and the second condition is they must have opposite speed they must 
have opposite spin and the atomic orbital must be singly occupied by electrons. If these two conditions are satisfied, then the chemical bond will be formed. And there is one more reason I have told you, one is uh, the predicting the electronic structure and the shape of the molecule under the same umbrella. And the second one is updating the chemical bonding concept instead of saying the mutual sharing of electron. And there is a third point that you have to remember, like if you take HU bond, HU bond and Cl2, both are formed by sharing of a single pair of electron. Whereas Cl2 bond, you can break it by applying around two, within 200 kilojoules of energy. Whereas if you wanted to break hydrogen molecule, you need to apply around 4. 50, around 450, not exactly, 450 kilojoules of energy. So, why there is a difference? Here, if you take Cl2 to redox structure is like this, if you take H2 to redox structure is like this, both are having a single bond. Then why there is a difference in the bond dissociation energy? It also could be explained by valence bond theory. And the first postulate is, a chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals and atomic orbital must satisfy two conditions they must have an unpaired electron and the second one is they should have opposite spin and the second point is once the chemical bond is formed the energy is lesser than the atoms that we have learned even in the previous concept and here even though they overlap they retain the identity of the atomic orbitals. They retain the identity of atomic orbitals. And the second point, as we can mention as it is, as the extent of overlapping increases, overlapping increases, strength of the bond also increases. Strength of the bond also increases. If you wanted to understand this point, you need to know what are the type of overlapping we encounter depending on the type of atomic orbital involved. So, depending on the type of orbitals in gold, there are three types of overlap, three types. First one is SS overlapping. If you take the example of SS overlapping, we can take H2 molecule. H2 molecule, if you take hydrogen is having an electronic configuration of 1s1, HA, HB, 1s1. So, I have taken a bond between two hydrogen atoms, this could be H A and this could be H B. So, each hydrogen atom is having 1s orbital. We know that 1s orbital is having a shape of spherical shape. So, 1s plus 1s, both will get overlap if they are having an unpaired electron with the opposite spin and they get and we will get a molecule, two S orbital will be overlapped and this overlapping is called SS overlapping. Please understand this hydrogen HA does not lose its identity, this region belongs to HA and this atom is HB, it does not lose its identity and they only share a common region where the probability of shared pair of electron is very high. So, the very first type of body overlapping is SS overlapping, best example is hydrogen molecule. And the second one is, we have told the another one, Cl2, Cl. So, the same way as we have drawn, we can take We can take Cl2, Cl2 
2 Cl A and Cl B. Two chloride atoms combine together to form Cl2 molecule. And if you write down the electronic configuration of Cl, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Only P orbital is having a vacant orbital. 2p5 means it comes like this. There is an unpaired electron. And this is P orbital which is having a shape like this. So two P orbitals. One P of this chlorine. Another P of this chlorine. Both of them will join together to form a bond which is formed by PP overlap. PP overlap. So both of them are retaining their identity. They share a common region, PP overlapping. Then third type, so three types SS, second one is PP and third one is SP. Example for SP, it is HCl. Just now we have seen hydrogen. Hydrogen is having a 1s orbital, it comes like this. So SP overlap. So if you take S orbital having an unpaid electron and it is sharing its region with P orbital. So this overlapping is called SP overlapping. So depending on the type of orbital involved in overlapping, there are three types of overlapping. What is SS overlapping, PP overlapping and SP overlapping. And here you can explain this extent of overlapping increases, strength of the bond also increases. And the extent of overlapping of this three bond would be written like this. SS is stronger than SP and that is stronger than PP. Because the extent of overlapping is more in case of SS and SP and PP. So just now I have told Cl2 is weak. It needs less amount of energy to break the molecule. Whereas H2 is strong, it needs around more than 400 kilojoules of energy in order to break. Why? The reason is in case of hydrogen, SS overlapping happens in case of chlorine molecule, PP overlapping happens. So this is weaker than this one. That's what reflected in case of chlorine and hydrogen. Hope you understood. Then next point is, There, are, there is one more point depending on the type of overlapping. Now we were discussing about the depending on the type of orbitals involved in overlapping. Depending on the type of overlapping. Depending on the type of overlapping, there are two types of bonds. We have seen SS, PP and SP. Three types of bonding we have seen depending on the type of orbitals involved. And all the three overlapping, if you see, you could see that all this happened by a mode of head to head overlapping. Or you can say tail to tail overlapping. Or you can say longitudinal overlap. So if you take PP for example, it is head to head. If you take SS overlap, it is head to head. If you take SP overlap, this is also head to head. Means along the axis. This is an atom in center position. This is a here is an atom, here is an atom, so along the axis. Here is an atom, here is an atom, it is along the axis. So along the axis, the bond happens along the axis. All this type of could be bonding would be represented by a letter sigma. Sigma stands the equivalent letter from English for S. Yes, in English, sigma. 
sigma in Greek. So, along the axis, if the overlapping happens, it is called sigma. And if you take few molecules like this is ethene molecule, we also say ethene molecule. Ethylene is having two carbon atom with a double bond. These two are attached by double bond. So I'll tell you a shortcut method. How many sigma bonds are there in between two atoms? If you wanted to know, you should count how many bonds are there. If it is a single bond, only sigma bond. If it is a double bond, one pi bond. One pi bond. What is this pi bond? A pi bond. So if you take like here, there is an unhydrogenized p orbital. This p orbital overlap like there is no option for two p orbitals. They can only overlap face to face overlapping. We'll discuss about it in detail. So if the overlapping happens face to face overlapping or lateral overlapping. Such bonds are called pi bonds. So these two cannot be stronger than sigma bond because sigma bond is head to head overlapping. Extent of overlapping is more, whereas in case of this, extent of overlapping is less. So a pi bond means lateral overlapping or face to face overlapping. About pi bond we will discuss in detail. So this type of bond is called pi bond and. We can extend to the second point. Sigma bond is stronger than pi bond because the extent of overlapping is more for sigma bond than pi bond. So these are the points to remember. So according to valence bond theory, a chemical bond is formed by overlapping of atomic orbitals having an unpaired electron with opposite spin, or singly occupied orbitals having opposite spin. They will form a chemical bond by overlapping of atomic orbital. Second point: as the extent of overlapping increases, the strength of the bond also increases. And depending on the atomic orbital involved, a chemical bond is the overlapping is categorized into SS overlapping, SP overlapping, and PP overlapping. Out of this, SS overlapping is more stronger than SP. And that is more stronger than PP. And there are two type of bond depending on the mode of overlapping or the type of overlapping. First one is sigma bond. Sigma bond is head to head overlapping or longitudinal overlapping. And pi bond. Pi bond is formed by face to face overlapping. And sigma bond is stronger than pi bond. We'll continue.